PT878 flow meter. It's designed to measure flows in uh, pipes uh, such that you don't have to cut the pipe in order to measure the flow. It's very convenient. Firstly, we need to configure this every time we need to use it. Now, we switch the meter on here. This meter is already switched on. We switch the meter on by pushing this little red button. We wait. Now, right, in order to configure the meter, we push the transducer button here. Now, it brings up a menu. Now, first thing we've got to do is um, select which particular type of transducer we're using. Now, in this case, we're using a type 402 transducer. Have a look on the side of the, um, the transducer. The figure is written here. This is a type. This is a type 402. So we come down to here. And make sure 402 is selected. We then come down and we have to set the temperature, the ambient temperature of the room. In this case, 22 degrees is probably about right. Now we need to next. We've not got to know a little bit about the pipe. So I select the pipe menu. I've moved the arrow key across. Press enter. Now. In this case, we're using PVC pipe. The outer diameter of the PC that PVC pipe is 63 millimeters. The wall thickness is four millimeters. It gives you the outer di diameter times pi, so you can actually confirm that. You'd usually get these out of the tables. If you happen to have a DIN pipe, you can select this particular schedule from the bottom, which makes it quite simple. Come up here. Now, next, next option we've got here is lining. Now, in this case, this pipe isn't lined. Next thing we're going to do is select a particular fluid. In this case we're water, 0 to 260 degrees, and the water temperature again, 22 degrees, is about right. Now we can switch tracking windows on. If we've got a material that's tending to be inconsistent, we'd switch tracking windows on. In this case, it's going to be highly consistent because it's just straight water. Last thing we need to do is select the number of paths. Now, if we have a single path, here's the pipe here, that means we'd have the transducers on opposite sides. Now this particular jig is configured for uh, two paths. However, if we use two paths, we'll end up with the transducers so close together they'll be hitting each other. So in this instance, we'd select four. Usually this would be two. Now, because we've got, I go enter and select four there. Now, because um, now we've selected four, that means we've got a distance between the two transducers. We have to set of 102 millimeters. Now, this is set on this jig, it's from this outer edge here to that inner edge there, set at 102 millimeters. Now we need to set the transducers on the pipe. Now they need to be fairly accurate, so we also need to put coupling, right, in order to get the signal through. So let's have a look, we'll put the coupling in here and mount the two, mount the two transducers. Set a line to set a line. Right. Good firm connection. We've mounted this fixture, the chains around, do a fairly large size pipe with it. Anyway, once we've finished that, we just simply hit the OK button here. Now, at the moment, the flow rate zero. Now, I'm going to switch on the um, the, um, the test rig here, and we'll start to get a bit of flow. And you'll see the fact that we've got um, now the response rate of this meter is quite slow. It's about a 30 second response time. So here we have flow kicking up the volume in litres per second 1.45, velocity about 0.6 metres per second. Now we can save, if we save, we'll be saving our setup, which is always a good idea. We'll save it as the default site. The meter has a whole heap of other facilities, for example, we can data log with it, etc. It's all relatively simple to put together. That's basically it. You're now measuring flow in a fully sealed pipe. You haven't cut the pipe makes things very simple. Thank you.